Hi, I'm Ken Levine, the creative director of Rational Games. And we're here today to show you a little bit of Bioshock. And we had a great E3 this year with Bioshock. And this is your, your, our first chance to show you, the gamers, what we're trying to do. Well, what are we trying to do? It's pretty ambitious. What we're trying to do is to redefine what it means to be a first person shooter. Our goal is to put a stake in the heart of all those cliches you've been playing for years in first person shooters, the linear corridors, the very static environments, and the cookie cutter AIs. Now, we understand that's a pretty lofty goal. And it's really gonna be up to you guys to decide whether we succeed. But with that said, let's go to the world of Rapture and take a look at Bioshock. Welcome to Rapture. Rapture is an underwater utopia built by a bunch of, a bunch of dreamers who decided to get away from what they saw as, as a world falling apart in the late 1940s, after World War II. They wanted to be free of the threat of governments, and the, and the nuclear bomb that hung over their he everybody's head and, and the religious powers that be that try to tell them what kind of lives to live. So they decided to build this beautiful utopia, the city under the water, that they could try out these philosophies. Now, Rapture was filled by incredible people, the most incredible scientists, architects. It's a place of extraordinary people, but when you come down to Rapture, you see a world that's fallen apart. One of the things we tried to do is to redefine what AIs can do in first-person shooters. And the way we try to do that is by giving them unique and incredible relationships that you haven't seen in other games. With that said, let's take a look at one of the first AIs we're gonna show you in Bioshock. Now, if we step forward, as Joe steps forward here, you'll hear the approaching footsteps of a big daddy. Now, the big daddies won't bother you if you don't bother them. They're genetically modified protectors of characters we call the Little Sisters. And the Little Sisters live in these vents you see over here. Now, what does a Little Sister do? The most important resource in the world of Rapture is something called Atom. The genetic material that powers all the genetic mutations that make, gives everybody their incredible powers in Bioshock. Here comes the Little Sister. Now, her job is to go around the world and find the only source of this Atom, this genetic material. And where did she find it from? Well, you're about to find out. But Joe, don't get too close to her. Whoa, Joe got a little too close to her. You see, she gets terrified. She runs behind her protector, the big daddy, who warns you off. Okay, now if you step back, if you get too, well, if you get too close, he'll push you back. But now if you step back, he won't fight you. He'll just warn you off, you see. Just stay away from her. Okay, so let's step back, Joe, and let them go about their business. Now, what is her business? Her job is to find Adam, and she finds it where? In the dead bodies that populate the city. And you can see how she gets it out of these bodies through this tool she has. Now, but the Adam's a nerd, and it needs to be recycled to be brought back to life. How does she do that? In her own body. Okay, so now the question you have is, do you exploit this little girl like the world has exploited them and take the Adam from her by force? Come on, let's go. Or do you find another way to get Adam, maybe even by helping these little girls? Up to the player to decide. We don't make those moral choices for the player. We leave it up to them. You'll even find opportunities later on to become the protectors maybe of these little girls through genetic modification. Or even have the big daddies think you're the little sisters, and they'll protect you. Manipulating the eyes, working with the eyes, exploiting the eyes are, is a huge part of this game. Now another part of this game is the fact that the player is always starving for resources, always on the search for resources. And right now Joe doesn't have any ammo for his gun. So he's going to head in the store and see if he can find some ammo. It's a little dark in this store, so let's turn on the light. Oh, but he's act Joe seemed to have activated this turret. Joe, let's head behind the counter and get some cover. Come on, this turret's taking chunks out of him. Watch out. Duck down. You can see everything in the world of Bioshock is interactive. Every every bottle, every cash register, everything. You can even drink the alcohol from the bottles, and that will have an effect on him in the game. 
Now he searches the, um, the cash register and he doesn't find any bullets for his gun, but he finds some atom, which is this, this the money of this world, the genetic material that drives everything. Now, but fortunately, there's more items downstairs in the store. You can see from that sign, it's our lame little joke. So let's um let's head downstairs to find look to look for more bullets. But I don't want to get shot. We don't want to get shot by this turret again too badly. Let's use our one of the first plasmids we have in the game. This is called Speed Boost. Plasmids are like our X-Men light genetic powers. And Joe's gonna use a Speed Boost plasmid now to get to move quickly past this turret. So let's activate the Speed Boost, and he zips by without taking a hit. So let's head downstairs. Now. One of the great things about Bioshock is, is it's a shooter with doesn't have the traditional monsters you've seen in, the, in, in, in games, like, you know, guys with flaming skulls and rocket launchers. The people in Rapture were just regular people from the period, from the 40s and 50s, trying to get by, trying to survive in a world falling apart. And you can see this woman genetically modified to become what we call a splicer. And um, she's just a regular person who had to modify herself to survive. You can see some of the physical effects, the genetic modifications out of her. If she didn't make it. Let's search her body and see if we can find some resources. Good, we got some bullets on her body. Let's grab some more bullets there. Now let's head upstairs. Now you can even see even the gun can modify your own weapons in Bioshock. And the gun, um, you can see it's just a regular pistol that Joe's modified to be more powerful with stuff, see, stuff he's found around the world. Oh, watch out for those fish. Now this is a security station up here. Now Joe is gonna use this security station to, if he, if he wants to later on, to take control of the security system, which is something he can do. Like we said, all the eyes of the world are, there's lots, there's hundreds of ways to interact with them. Security station's one of them. But let's leave this security station for now and move on down the hallway here. As we head on down the hallway, we have to be careful, because Joe's just been jumped by one of these slicers here. And he's gonna get into a combat with You can see this woman's been genetically modified. She's been called a ceiling crawler. She can actually, whoa. She could actually jump up to the ceiling and, and throw these projectiles at Joe. And Joe's having a hard time fighting her because he's got the wrong kind of ammo to fight her. Oh, but he finally got her. Took a bunch of rounds and Joe took a bunch of damage. Let's search her body and, and head on to um, see if we can find some more resources. We head down the corridor and there we see a body which may have some goodies on it. But there is a security camera up there. So what do we do? Lots of options here, like everything in Bioshock. It's all about choice, all about options. We can head back to the security system to shut down and take control of the camera, but that takes a, that takes the atom. We could shoot the camera, but that takes bullets. We don't have a lot of bullets. So let's try to just zip past the camera and hope he doesn't spot us while we search his body. So zip by it, Joe. You can even hear the music of the world endlessly playing on the phonograph. Oh, Joe got spotted by the camera, and here comes some, some reinforcements, some security bots. Joe's gonna duke it out with this guy. I defeated that one, but they're gonna keep coming. So Joe's gotta get back to that security station while he's taking damage here and use it to shut down the security system. Okay, shut it down, Joe. That cost Adam. But you see, he didn't have to destroy that, that bot. Now he can actually, if he wanted to, we're not gonna do it right now, but he can actually take control of this bot and it would follow him around and protect him. Let's keep moving. Now we can see Sophia Salon here, a clothing store. Maybe there's some maybe there's some materials in here we can use. Hey, look, on the counter, there's a plasmid. Now we talked about the plasmids before. We had this used the speed boost before. This is an even more powerful plasmid called Spicer Irritant. Let's pick it up. We're not gonna use it right now, but it may come in handy. Head back across the hallway. This bar here, and we can see some bullets in the water on the ground. We'll talk about water in a bit in this game, the role it has. Okay, we got some arm, we got some anti personnel bullets, it's good because if we come across any more splicers, those are the right kind of ammo to use against them. Okay, watch, I think I hear somebody. Okay, Joe's about to be ambushed from behind by another, by another ceiling crawler, but now he's got the right kind of ammo to deal with her. So this fight can go a lot more in his way. Two shots took care of her with the right kind of ammo. Nice, Joe. So search her, get some goodies from her. Let's, uh, let's heal, let's take a moment, heal up, reload the weapon maybe. Oh, what's this? I think I hear, I think there's a big daddy coming. You can hear his heavy footsteps in the hallway. And again, now he's not gonna bother us if we don't bother him. But maybe actually there's a way to turn him to our advantage if we get into more trouble with more splicers. Right now he's just going through the world searching dynamically. It's all dynamic, none of it's scripted. 
searching for another little sister to, to help to escort. Now, another great thing about Bioshock is just the open-ended nature of the environment. It's just you can go anywhere. There's different areas of the mall to explore. You can go back and search for more stories. You can go into any of these bathrooms. We're not one linear extended corridor like a lot of first-person shooters are. We want to give players that freedom of exploration. But let's head into one of the bathrooms here. You can see something we're really proud of in Bioshock. We really want to give the player the feeling that the world, that the ocean is, is coming back in to claim the city of Rapture. And to that end, we really, we've hired a, a team of guys just to work on water effects, to a uh, water program and a water artist. And you can see some of the amazing water effects we have in the game. Look, and I'm not a technical expert here, so I can't tell you all the things that are going on. That's for another story um, that's going on technically. But our goal was just to make the f player feel like the city's tr the, the ocean's trying to drown him. And I think we get the real, we really achieve that emotionally. Now you see here is a plasma quick. Now remember, Rapture's a world where if you're not happy with, you know, how, how good looking you are, how strong you are, how smart you are, even the size of your sexual organs. Well, you can change that through the plasma quick. It's a place to genetically modify yourself on the fly. That's the kind of city this place is. So let's use this machine. We go into it here and you can see we have um, the speed boost plasma we were using before. Let's swap it out for the aggressor irritant we just picked up in the clothing store. And that may come in handy real soon. So let's head out of the bathroom. We'll head into the mall area. The world's full of things to interact with. There's a vending machine here which you can even buy stuff from. You hear that insane, insane clown cackling. Who's the, the, the mascot of that machine? Okay, now here we are in the mall area, and there's the record store we need to go to, but unfortunately, there's a splicer in front of it, and a big daddy and a little sister. Now we can fight all of them, but maybe there's another way to deal with this problem. Let's use the big daddy to our advantage to deal with this splicer. Let's use our new plasmid, called Aggressor Irritant. Throw it at him, and when... Great, when she sees him, she goes after him thinking he's you, and they're gonna start duking it out. Let's use the distraction to go into the record store, Joe. Okay, and they're gonna fight it out. It's not your problem anymore. Okay, we're in the record store here. <laughs> you can still hear them duking it out back there. Now, sometimes when we've done this demo, they actually the, the fight comes into the record store. I don't know if that's gonna happen this time. They're still duking it out. But let's head up um, the balcony here. And there's the object we've been looking for this time with that, that yellow disc down there. Well, we have a problem. We've got the, um, another splicer guarding it down there. And she's just going about her business, searching, searching that body. But me, and there's an, another problem, which is a security camp, which is watching the whole scene. Well, we can fight them both, or maybe there's another way to deal with this problem. Let's use another plasmid called Security Beacon. And let's cast that on her. And now the camera thinks she's you. Remember those bots you had to deal with before? Well, guess what? Now they're her problem, and they're gonna start duking it out down there. Meanwhile, you can take out the camera while they fight it out. All your problems are being dealt with by them, by the AIs of the world, instead of you having to fight everybody on your own. Well, let's head down here. Grab that disc we wanted. It gives you a message to help you progress to the level. And the guy talking is Sandra Cohen, is in this insane musician who's trapped you in this level. And you can see a picture of him on an ad for one of his albums up on the wall there. And one of the things you found out is that he had this woman, Anna Culpepper, killed. You can see her on the poster over there for making him an album that mocked his music. Now he's trapped you in this level, and you're trying to get out. But you're about to learn he might have some tricks up his sleeve. You can see he set up an ambush for you. Uh-oh. You're in the dark. And Cohen sent in some trouble. Thanks for taking a look at Bioshock. We hope to show you some more real soon.